Oh, shoot. There you go, right there. Hey, Johnny. What? What you doing, baby? I'm talking to my friends. Well, get your butt in this golf cart. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> What's up? What's up, baby? Hey, Scotty. All right, Danny, let's do this. Let's do this. Hey, are you a good driver? Uh, I... You see, just please say yes. I am a just say yes. I, I am driven. No. I have driven. Here's what I can I'm do. getting out of it. <laughs> you said something about uh, the holidays. Thanksgiving is going to be something oh, pretty major for you. Is that right? Scott. Going back to my residency at Harris for September, October, November. What? Then, then after Thanksgiving, Yes. we take the tour to a huge arena tour over in the UK. Like, Eight to ten thousand seat arenas. It's gonna be so fun. Who do you think in recent years has raised the bar the most? Me. <laughs> Is that easy question? Easy answer. Mwah. Well, you'd have to see my show. Come on! I, I do a rap in the show. I'm okay. sorry, what? I do a rap in the show. It, it's like, it all began back in Utah. I was four years old. Started singing with my brothers and the sound was like gold. So my folks took a leap and said, what the hey? We gotta get these monsters out to California, yeah. And it goes on and on and on and on. Let me Ten. find out that Danny Ten Eisen. minutes long. It's probably one of my favorite parts of the show. Do you have a favorite hip hop artist? I'll Are you like a, a Nicki Minaj fan? Well, I, I, I was hoping that Nicki would do like a duet with me one time, but you're that kidding. You no, know, it did fell through. Nicki. Yeah. Come you on. Didn't wanna, you didn't want to jump on the track with our boy Danny Austin. <laughs> oh it my was God. a song actually I wrote. It's called uh, "Life After Loneliness." I, I saw, you know, the Justin Bieber video, "Lonely." Yes. Okay, I saw that video, and and I said to myself, man, if anybody can relate to that, it's me, because I've been through all that stuff. Right. And I've been through this so much, this show business thing, came through the, end of the other end of the tunnel. Yes, I got scars and all that stuff from, from show business, but there's life after loneliness. That's real. And that's what I call this song. You, you a star. It was such a cool song. And that was the song I want Nikki to do like a rap on it, but it didn't happen. You have been famous for a very long time. <laughs> like a very, do you remember the first time you realized you were famous? It was the first show after One Bad Apple, my first number one record with my brothers. We did a test concert. It was in Cleveland. And I remember running out on stage in a, it was in a blackout, right? And I had no idea what the reaction of the audience would be. Right. But I heard all this screaming, and I thought, somebody's hurt. And I realized, they're screaming for us. Screaming for and us. And it was that moment I thought, wow. Hey, this is working. This yeah. Is, this is working. And we'll continue to work. No, for... not really. What do you mean, not really? No, I mean, I ups and downs, Scott. The interesting thing about my career, Scott, is that the Donnie and Marie show was a really powerful show worldwide. Yeah. But it, it really did leave me with such a cutesy, goody goody image, right? Okay. And I, I just came off a teeny bopper image. So right, right, it, the right. name Donnie Osmond just wasn't cool. And when Soldier of Love came out, that's what turned everything around. I am willing to But it still wasn't cool. Then I, then I did Joseph and the Amazing Technical the Dreamcoat, and then that mm -hmm. kind of cooled it up a little bit more. Like the world was sleeping. Winning Dancing with the Stars, that really started cooling up, but becoming the first mass singer as the Peacock. The thing that really turned it around was when I became Captain Shang in the Disney movie Mulan. Let's get down to business. It's so cool to be involved in that, in that movie. It's like one of the classics. Is there a career regret? One you were like, either you passed on, or you did and you were like, nah, that probably wasn't the best choice. Maybe wearing purple socks. <laughs> that, maybe that was not a good idea. <laughs> when the deep purple falls over it was my signature back in the 70s, it was purple socks. They sold purple socks. Everybody started wearing purple. Purple you know? socks! You've had some pretty incredible um, celebrity friendships. Yeah, I have, yeah. Who, who to you do, would you say people would be the most shocked by or most surprised by? Probably Michael Jackson. He told me something one time, and it, it really kind of shocked me when he said it. He turned to me, he said, you know, Donnie, you're the only person on this planet 
that knows exactly what I've gone through in my life. It's true. And I said, you know what, Mike? You're the only person that knows what I've gone through. We both come from a family of nine. He and I are both the seventh child of nine. Wait, We're what? both uh, almost exactly the same age. Our mother's birthdays are on the same day. Did you guys feel the kind of like competition that many people tried to, yeah. you know, kind of feed into? It was there. Was it? In fact, my One Bad Apple, our first number one, was written for the Jacksons. No way. Here's another one. Been the two of us need look like no. Been the two of us need look like no more. That's my song. What? It is a true story, Scott. What do you mean that's your it song? It was written for me to sing. And the reason I didn't record Ben is because I was on tour and I, I wasn't available. And so they said, let's get Michael Jackson to sing it. That was my song. There are a lot to say about the family dynamic. Yep. Right? You guys are an incredibly tight-knit group. Yep. You and your sister go on to have this incredible show. Well, look, man, it's not easy working with a dummy. Were there moments where you were like, okay, I think this is, I think this is going to be the last one we do? No. We had a thing on stage that was really second to none. We, we could look at each other, know exactly what we're going to do. I mean, we knew when we closed our residency in Las Vegas, that was it, you know? Was that tough? Yeah. It was, it was emotional. Was it? We used to end our television show with, May tomorrow be a perfect day, and then may you find love and laughter along the way. So when we sang that for the last time, we both started crying. I know it sounds very sappy, but we thought, this is it. Donny Osmond is in my golf cart. And this is Golf Cart Confessions. <laughs> I didn't want to blow up his spot, but... Uh, How are you? Howdy! Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold uh -oh. on. Oh. Donnie's out of the cart. I gotta uh -oh. say hi. hi He's How out of the cart. Let's get a picture together. Hey. Come on, let's picture together. Hi. Here we go. Donnie has one, gotten out of the cart. One, two, three, go. Oh, one more, one more. <laughs> Donnie! I love it! <laughs> Come on! Have fun! Is this not a Universal Studios tour? Is it wet? <laughs> yeah, baby! Is there a song that if you didn't have to sing again, you wouldn't miss it? Well, there was a time in my life when I never wanted to sing Puppy Love again. Because it was keeping me back. Mm -hmm. You know, so everybody sing Puppy Love, sing Puppy Love. But I wanted to progress. Right. But once things started kicking in, everything started working. Puppy Love is the fourth song on my set list, and I treat it with respect. Because and you... they called it Puppy Love. Early, early on in your career life, before you got married, was there a celebrity crush? Yeah, Olivia and John, I had a post of her. But then when, when Olivia came on the Donnie and Marie show, and she sang a duet with me. You're the one that I want. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And she grabbed my tie. Come on. <laughs> and she started pulling me towards her. I just, died and went to heaven. We miss her. I, I miss day. that lady. She was the bomb. So you got married at 20? I was 20. 20? Yeah, I, I met my wife when she was 15. I was 16. And we dated secretly. Actually, she dated my brother first. I stole my wife from my brother. <laughs> what happened was, I was dating this girl named Tammy. I was madly in love with her. Tammy. And, and Tammy. And Jay was dating Debbie, my wife. And we went to an Elton John concert. And I remember when Elton sat down, it's a little bit funny. I look over at my brother's date, and I thought to myself, huh. I'm going to marry that girl someday. And I did. What? Yes. How did you explain that to your brother? I haven't spoken to him since. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how'd you win her over? I'm Donny Osmond. <laughs> <laughs> what do you get a spouse that you've been married to for 45 years of? What is the gift scenario? My wife is this way. She's very sentimental. She likes the simple things. The best things you can do is just be kind and sweet and take her on these enormous vacations. <laughs> I don't know if this is the secret or whatever, okay. but whenever I make a decision, career or anything, right? I always say to myself first, how does it affect Debbie? Really? Then I say, how does it affect my children? Then I say, how does it affect my grandchildren? Then I say, how does it affect me? 
Wow. That's the sequence of uh, things that I go through in my mind. Now, do your grandkids call you? What do they call you? Oh, you name it, they call me. Because <laughs> I can't see, I don't see you granddad. I just well, don't see it. Yeah, uh, but um, I'm a fun granddad, a grandpa. But I don't see you, is that, do they call you grandpa? That's no, there's no way. Papa. Uh, one of them started calling me Poopa, and I ended that one real fast. Real fast. Yeah, real yeah, fast. That's a, but that's, wipe our that's hands on that. But Bapa's one, um, like Grandpa. 14? 14. Sweet. And only two of those 14 are girls. And Debbie and I had five boys. What? Yes. I, Y'all I, just stay making boys. I just didn't study that chapter in school. I don't know how to make girls. <laughs> I, don't I, know how, just, I don't know how to do it. No, I just don't know how to do I it. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> Five boys for you and Debbie. Yeah. What was that like at home? I just imagine that is chaos. Madness. Yeah, it's always. Madness. Yeah, but you know what? It's it's sweet chaos. Okay, you know we gotta end it with a little golf cart confession, rapid fire. Yes, sir. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Who was your first kiss? My first kiss, Cindy Palmer. Oh, Cindy. Yeah. First kiss. Okay. Yeah, you know where it was? Elvis Presley Sweet. Oh my goodness. I can't believe you got that out of Come me, Scott. On. Oh okay. my goodness. Have you ever been fired from a job? No. Okay. Most famous person in your phone right now? Tom Hanks. The, like, Tom Hanks? Right, and actually, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll put Stevie Wonder. Let's, let's just, Stevie Wonder. The movie of your life is going to be incredible. Oh, the movie of my life? The movie of your life is going to be incredible. Who plays adult Donnie? Oh, I have no idea. No? I have no, you? I was, <laughs> <laughs> see, I was gonna say Ryan Gosling. Oh, that's a good choice. Why not? You know? That is a really good, who would play younger Donnie? Younger Donnie, younger Donnie, younger Donnie. Teenage Donnie, ah, Teen Justin Bieber. What would be your career if you weren't the Donnie Oscar? NASA. What? NASA. Like I either work for NASA or Apple as a, an electrician or tech, technical engineer. Is I'm, that right? Yeah. You're the man. It's so good to see you.